So let's try a project here from start to end. Uh, client has requested a very simple deck. It's rectangular. It's 16 feet by 33 feet. So I'm just going to draw a rectangle that's twice, twice as long as it is wide. There we go. And I'm going to put in the dimensions right away just so that I have constant reference to the sizes I'm dealing with. So it's 33 feet along this direction and it's 16 feet along this direction. And based on what we learned today, we know that um, the spans for the joists shouldn't exceed 16 feet. We're going to try to do it somewhere between 12 and 14. Um, so if I do some very quick math here, 33 divided by 2 is uh, 16 and a half feet, so therefore it's too long. So I need to put in at least three beams. The first one I'm going to put right two feet from the edge on one side and two feet from the edge on the other side and then I'll have a third beam right in the middle. So if we do the math behind here, let's put it down on the sheet so it makes us makes it more simple to remember all the numbers that we're dealing with here. So I've got in here, I've got a two foot distance and here I've got a two foot distance. So between those two, that's four feet from uh, the 33 feet. So that's 29 feet left over. Uh, 29 feet, so half of that is on this side, which is 14 foot 6 inches. And I'm switching to using feet and inches instead of decimal feet, just because we should be familiar with all the different methods. 14 feet, 6 inches. And let's do a quick math here. So 14, 6, 14, 6, that's 28, 29 feet and 2 is 31 and 2 is 33. So there are our measurements and remember what we've actually done here. The 14 foot 6 is the span of the joist from the center line of the beam to the center line of the beam on both sides. That's the span. But when we're looking at weight distribution we're looking at distances in between beams. So I'm just going to draw some very quick lines here to represent the center line. So here I have the center line of the joist or the space between the joist. I'm not drawing this very well. Hold on here. There we go. And then I've got a short line and then a long line. That represents the center line. And same here. There's my long dash, my short dash, my long dash. So there's dimensions along here I have to be aware of um, and because that determines the supported length. So let's put those numbers in here. So half of 14 foot 6 is 7 foot 3. I just divide the 14 by 2 and the 6 by 2. So I get 14 foot 3 but we have 2 feet or 7 foot 3 but we have 2 feet there as well. So this length in here is actually 9 foot 3. So remember, it is the half distance, 7 foot 3, and I'll put that up in here just so that you can be reminded of exactly what the dimensions are that we're looking at. 7 foot 3, 7 foot, and 3 inches. There we go. And on this side, it won't let me move over here, so i got to go over here. This is also 7 foot and 3 inches. This on this side of the center mark is also seven foot. So I'm laying out the beam locations to one another. Hopefully this will make more sense. This is a two foot overhang, seven foot three to the middle. So two feet plus seven foot three is nine foot three. So we've got the same on this side as well. This will be nine foot three. And this is the what's referred to as the supported length for the beam. So how much is the beam supporting? It's supporting two feet on this side, seven foot three on this side. So there we have the nine foot three. And in here, it's seven foot three and seven foot three. So the supported length at the center beam, remember it's always more in the center, is 14 foot six inches. So that being the case, I'm just going to put underneath here, SL for supported length, just so that you know what these values are. That's an SL. And that's an SL. Whereas this 14 foot 6 here, this is actually the span. So this is the joist span. I'll just put that in here. And up in here, we have the same 14 foot. And this is all the information we need to be able to design the um, structure according to what the Ontario Building Code 
requires. Okay, so we've got all the different lengths that we need. Now we can refer to the chart. So I've pulled up the table and I'm looking at the different 16 inch values. Remember, we're calculating the joist spans, so we need to know what size joist that we're going to be using in this project. And if we take a look here, on the drawing it says 14 foot 6 is the span. So I'm going to highlight the sections I'm going to look at over here. This 16 inch uh, on center, 14 foot 6, that's the smallest one that I could use. So with this one in here, 14 foot 9 would be 16 inch centers 2 by 12. What if I go here? Again, I can't use 13 foot 8, it's too small. So this one again is 15 foot 5. So that one there is uh, with bridging, and with bridging and strapping, it's 15 foot 9, it's 14 feet, which is too small. So what if I were to change to 12 inch centers? Again, here it makes no difference. I'd still have to go with 2 by 12s. There's 14 foot 6. That one's right on. Um, so we tend to hesitate when we look at numbers that are exactly right, but it's still an option. And then we have this one in here with bridging and strapping that meets the requirement at 15 foot 1. So we've looked at five possible options that work for this 14 foot 6 dimension. Which one are we going to pick? I don't know yet. So what we typically do in this particular case is we write them down um, on our table. I'm just going to make this a wee bit smaller so that I can see both tables at the same time. There we go. And I'm going to write down all these different options here so that way I can always go back to it and figure out what I can use. So here are the different options that I have. And I'm going to start on the left side with strapping only. So I can go with uh, 2 by 12 at, um, what were they, 16 inches at 16 inches on center. And that is strapping only. So we just put the letter S. And we try to capitalize that so we know what it is. And just say W forward slash S. There we go. What's the next size? Well, I can go 2 by 10. Uh, at 16 inch centers as well. No, that one is at 12 inches on center. Okay, so we're going to do that at 12 inches on center. 12 inches on center. We try to avoid 12 inches on center uh, only because it's more wood, but in some cases it may work out to be better. And this is with bridging, so with bridging. Okay, and the next one I have 2 by 12s. 2 by 12s here at 16 inches on center, uh, on center, and this is with bridging, okay, so with bridging, and then the next one I have there is 2 by 12s at 16 inches on center with bridging, so 2 by 12 at 16 inches on center, on center, and that is also with bridging, and then the final choices I have are 2 by 10s, 2 by 10s, and this is at 12 inches on center, 12 inches on center, and that is with bridging and strapping. I forgot my forward slash there. And then I'm just going to make this a bit longer so it fits. There we go. That way I can backspace that. And then the next one I have available to me is 2 by 12s. And that is at 16 inches on center. And that is also with bridging and strapping. Now, why am I writing all these down? Well, each one of these has a different span. So this one in here is 14 foot 9. And the next one below that, if I move down in here, is 14 foot 6. And 
the next one that we have here, whoops, the next one we have here is uh, 15 foot 5, 15 foot 5 inches. Forgot to put the brackets in. And the reason we put in brackets is this is what the code is saying that we could maximize each one in at. And later on, you're going to find that when we start looking at the overall designs, these are the things that we can actually change. And by having these notations, we can make minor changes to this and know that we're not affecting the final product. I missed one here, uh, one, two, three, four. I missed one here. I'm going to go through them all just to make sure. Two by 12's at 16, I've got that one, that's four foot nine. Two by 10's at 12, and that's 14 foot six. Two by 12's at 16, 15 foot five. Then I've got two by 10's, uh, I wrote that one down twice, so there's my error right there. And yeah, I make mistakes, that's okay. And I can put that over here. There we go. And then the last one is 15 foot 9. 15 foot 9 inches. So we have all these different variations that are possible, and we maintain them all. We note them all. Um, any one of these combinations will work based on the span that I need of 14 foot 6. Now, why do I do this? Because sometimes when I calculate the beams, it may be more efficient to put in an extra beam or change the calculation. But also on site work, if they can't put in the post because there's an oversized rock or anything like that, they maybe have to move the beam over, and we don't have a 2 foot overhang anymore. We only have about 1 foot 6. But if I do that, I increase the span to 15 feet. Well, I need to be able to go down this table and say, well, if I specify 2 by 12s, yeah, it can go all the way to 15 feet. So I'm safe by doing that. So we're always planning ahead. So now I'm going to take a look at where the posts need to be located. So I, I do know that I have a post here. There we go. And I've got a post here. And the distance between the posts is important. Our overall distance is 16. So I know that I can have an overhang here of 2 feet and an overhang down here of 2 feet. So that leaves me with what? That leaves me with a span of 12 foot. And here I'm going to type in column to column just so that we know what it is that we're referring to. Okay, let's take a look at another one of the tables to uh, help us determine whether uh, we can do what we plan on doing here. All right, okay, so what do we need to know in order to be able to use this table on the right side? Well, we need to know the supported joist length. That was this information over here, and the supported joist length here are the numbers I've created down below. The 9 foot 3, 14 foot 6, and 9 foot 3. So the 14 foot 6 is the critical one, but we need to calculate each of the beams. So let's do the first one, 9 foot 3. So if I go down into this table down here, I'm looking at the one that will satisfy 9 foot 3, and it's this one right here where I have 10 foot or 9 foot 10 inches. Sorry, again, I'm having some challenges here. There we go. 9 foot 10 inches satisfies the 9 foot 3 supported length. That's what this is referring to is the supported length. Okay, so our beams or our posts, we just uh, quickly calculated, they're 12 feet apart. So I'm going along this table and there, I'm going to have a couple of options. Oh, there's my first one. So I got my 13 foot 1 here. Now I'm going to have some other options here. So I have one here, 13 foot 5. Now why are the numbers going up and down? because this row, this group of th three refers to two by tens, and this group of three refers to two by twelve. So we have two different options. So once again, I'm gonna type out my options for my beams. I've got two different types of beams here. So I'm gonna type in beam, oops, sorry, beam one, and the supported length um, equals nine foot three inches, nine foot three inches on our um, drawing, but we're looking at the maximum value 
at the table, which is 9 foot 10. And notice how I'm always putting in, in brackets, the actual value that the Ontario Building Code will allow us to go, just in case I need to increase that beam size. So I've got two options here. I can go 2 inch by 10 inch, and that is a um, 2 inch by 10 inch. Uh, it is a 4 ply. So the way we write this is simply 4 ply, 2 inch by 10 inch, built up wood beam. So built up wood beam, and that's how we'd indicate it. All right. What other options do I have? I have a 2 inch by 12 inch, and it's 3 ply. Or I can go with 3 ply, and this is a 2 inch by 12 inch. And it's also a built up wood beam. And this simply helps us uh, identify what it is that we're working with. So that is for beam number one. So let's take a look at the second beam here, beam two. This is the heavier one. And beam two um, is how much of a supported length. It has a supported length equal to, this time it's 14 foot six, 14 foot six inches. So on the table, we can't use the same row. I have to look for 14 foot six, and it's this one that says 15 foot nine. 13 nine is too short. So back here, we're going to type in 15 feet nine inches. That's the maximum uh, post to post that we could go. And what are our options here? We're looking at 12 foot column to column. So I'm going along here looking for the number 12. That one's too short. That one's too short. Look at that. I've only got really one option here and another option there. I'm going to write both of them, even though they're 2 by 12s, because that's only at 12 foot 2 inches. We're really maxing out what's available to us. So we've got a, um, that's a 4 ply, 2 inch by 12 inch. Oops. 2 inch by 12 inch. And that is a built up wood beam. And here also, I should be putting in the column spacing. I should do that in the one above as well. 12 foot 2 inches. Just so we have on record what the Ontario Building Code says. And then a 5 ply. 2 inch by 12 inch. Oops, I forgot the by sign. 12 inch. And that is also a built up wood beam. And that maxes out at 13 foot 8. So let's go up above and review the ones that we had earlier. For the first beams, the two outer side beams, we had a 4 ply, uh, 2 by 10. So remember, we went this way. So that was 13 foot 1 was our max on that one, 13 foot 1 inch well within the 12 feet that we require. And the next one was 13 foot 5. And once again, we have the OBC uh, maximum values. And this is simply, again, to help us with our decision-making process as we're going through this. Now, how will I ultimately make decisions? I want consistency. If I finally decide that beam 1 is going to be a 2 by 12, beam 2 will also be 2 by 12s. So I don't have things at different heights. That complicates our, our uh, construction. So we want to make it consistent. So these numbers here uh, for this particular project, if I went through it, I'd take a look at that and say, OK, what seems to work? The beam number 2 has the maximum size. They're all 2 by 12s. So if I can go with 2 by 12s here, and that's how I'll select it. Um, the 2 by 12 4 ply is 12 foot 2 inches. That's right on. So if somebody's slightly out with the column, that may mess up. So I'm going to pick the one that I'm going to go with over here, which is the um, 5 ply 2 by 12. Now I'm going to go back to beam number 1. I also have a 2 by 12, which is only 3 ply. So I'm going to use that. Now I can go to my choice selection, and I have a choice. I can stick with 2x12s or go with 2x10s. 
I know the numbers that I need and I know the values that I have. The 14 foot 6 probably is going to be best and those would be my selections for this particular problem. So the idea here is to go through a very simple deck design and understand the principles. Two foot overhang, two foot overhang for the beam, for the joist. Column to column spacings, make sure you don't go any further than 12 feet. See as we went 12 feet from column to column, um, we started really getting near the end of the chart, end of the tables and what we could do. Um, the same with your joist bands, you want to go somewhere between that uh, 13 to 15 foot range uh, for the spans and that will make your selection much easier. So if you can do this from start to end, we will have an opportunity to try this out again on one of my project pieces and uh, we'll practice it together just so we have a better understanding on how to lay out beams and columns, size the joists and size the beams for your project.